this is Brother Randolph. I should, yeah. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Yes, this name would be your name. Brother here in the first year of the week. We all ain't gathered together at the Sunday school. We just thank you for that. It's the right of Savior. We pray it. On the behalf of that, the other only week, you know, to the building there, to your church also. Be with Brother, we pray on heaven, for the day. Be with him on the lesson that he has put together for us, Heavenly Father. We pray to you. Scream to stand boldly as he used you to do, Heavenly Father. And explain it out to us, Heavenly Father, and we fly to our daily life and be stronger, brother and sister in Christ, and have the hope to reach out to us and encourage them to put on Christ before we have the hope. So we all just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Glad you all could make it today. Yeah. Today, Amen. just going over many scriptures today that remind us uh, how Jesus has the ability to guarantee us a life full of joy and happiness. We can have all the fruits of the Spirit uh, if you so choose. It's up to us according how we walk, according how we praise God, according how we uh, try to uh, spread His goodness and let other people know how good He is. If we do those things, then He's promised us an abundant life. I'll start the first scripture, John 10, 10. He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He, he, he came uh, to show us how to have a better life. You know, to put it simple, that the life that the world uh, flashes in front of us uh, it's not good for us. It's not good for our soul. Uh, it's, it's not good uh, to uh, uh, grow our the spirit that lives within us. Uh, the world life quenches the spirit. The worldly life brings on death. You know, so we listen to Jesus. You know, we can have peace and joy in our life. So this was Jesus' purpose. One of, the, one of the reasons he came was to show us how uh, to have life and have it more abundantly. We can move on to John 15. John 15, I'll read it for you. We need to know, you know, how to have this abundant life. So in John 15, uh, 1 through 5, I'll read it for you. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So you want to bring forth much fruit? You want to have much joy and peace in your life? You know, you have to come to Jesus. That's right. And we have to let people know that that their struggles and their sorrow and pain uh, is from not walking after <coughs> Jesus. Plain and simple. We just read it. Joy and peace is in Jesus. So our goal then is to walk as straight after Jesus as we can. Do what he says do without question. Both feet. He says, do not forsake the assembly, then try to get here. Let somebody know if you can't get here, you know? And make an effort. Make an effort to get here. brothers and sisters, do all the things that Jesus said, and you will have peace. 
peace and joy. The other thing that people have to know is uh, Galatians 3.27. I'll read it for you. Paul says, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ and put on Christ. People need to know that baptism is part of the abundant life. That's right. You can't have the abundant life without uh, coming through the water. Okay. So we have all of these uh, churches that try to say that baptism is ordinary. I see you, Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. Many of these churches try to say baptism is not required, so they are limiting people's abundant life by, by fooling them into thinking that baptism is not required. Mm -hmm. They're cutting off their joy. Mm -hmm. They're cutting off their peace. You know, uh, Yes, sir. By you saying that and the response to what's going on now, you can see they don't, they claim they have the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, I have we studied with a group of them, you know, they claim they have the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you have the spirit and not put on spirit like us, mm -hmm. you wouldn't see the Church of Christ members out doing Brothers all this marching and stuff. Thank you, because brother. Because with the spirit, mm -hmm. it reminds you. If you playing a game mm -hmm. and whoever wins, mm -hmm. you honor that one. When you win, they honor you. That's you know, we are not doing what they're doing if you have the spirit of God. But when you're walking after God, it don't matter. Well, right. It don't but, really matter who wins. That's saying, right. That's right. Right, right. right. Because we know God is going to protect us regardless. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So we can tell a lot about people by what they do, how they walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's showing up. Yeah, they're showing us where their faith is. Their faith is in man. Right. It's not in God. Yeah, so in those words that you can see clearly now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Randolph. So we can look at uh, how we can bear fruit. And the first way uh, is shown, uh, I'm showing in Romans 1.13, how we can bear fruit. Mm -hmm. I'll read it for you, Romans 1.13. Okay. <clears throat> now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was left hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among <coughs> other Gentiles. I'll read it for you. We don't really talk like this. Let me read it again. Okay. Romans 1.13. Mm -hmm. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was left hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. He's talking about I might have some fruit among you also. I might bring some people to the church. Mm -hmm. It's one way to bear fruit. Right, yeah. you know, it brings joy to you to know that you help someone come to the church. Mm. So we're talking yes. about living the abundant life. How to live the abundant life. One way to live <clears throat> is to share the good things that you know about the Lord with other people and help them come to the church. It will bring you joy. So we can take a look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. 1 Timothy 2, 3. And we can see clearly uh, what God wants for the people in the world. 1 Timothy 2, 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants all men to be saved. Yes. He opens the doors for all men. And we are God's hands in the world. Uh, we are his mouthpiece. 
um, to speak to people and let them know mm. that many of their struggles uh, is coming because they're not living in a manner that's pleasing unto God. Mm -hmm. They are not behaving in a manner that's pleasing unto God. So we use our uh, eyes to see uh, people suffering and we use our mouth to speak and let them know uh, that they can live a better life. They can live an abundant life walking after Jesus. That was 1 Timothy 2, 3. Another one, 2 Peter 3, 9. I'll read it for you. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us for it, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord doesn't want us to suffer, but he allows us to suffer if we choose to suffer. He gives us free will. We can choose suffering, or we can choose the abundant life. It's all up to us. Our job while we're here is to let people know that, that they choose their suffering. Yeah, to make it plain. They choose their own suffering. Okay, I know there's scriptures that say that we will be persecuted as Christians. I know all of that. But in addition to that, people bring on more suffering by doing things uh, uh, in disobedience to God. Yeah. We don't have to worry about the persecution that we uh, get as Christians because God will uh, not give us more than we can bear. That's right. Uh, for being persecuted as Christians. But that other stuff will cause us to lose our place in heaven. Mm -hmm. The other things that people do, the uh, uh, alcoholism, uh, drug addicts, and fornication, and adultery, uh, and gossip, and all of those things will cause us to lose our place uh, in heaven. People need to know that the Lord is not pleased with that lifestyle. So, 2 Peter 3, 9 just told us God's desire is that all people be saved. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, all people uh, don't choose to be saved. So, we have to, you know, keep trying to find the magic words that they can hear, you know, because they haven't uh, heard uh, God's message yet in a way that they can understand. Brenda and I were with her friend yesterday, and she was uh, sounding like she's ready, you know, to come to church. But uh, she wasn't ready to come today. She says, I'm coming, but I can't come tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody comes when they're ready. Another example, uh, Luke 15:8 uh, tells us, uh, gives us an example of how happy the Lord is when a person repents uh, and follows Christ. Luke 15:8, I'll read it for you. Either what woman had the ten pieces of silver? If she lose one piece, does, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Likewise, I say it to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Mm. So we can have joy by helping people to come to the church, by explaining to them why they should come to the church, explaining to them that the abundant life is possible if they uh, are faithful and obedient. Oh, here's an example of uh, how women souls uh, brought joy to Paul's life. 
make you feel good, you know, when you help somebody come yes. to church mm -hmm. and you know that their life is going to be better, mm -hmm. you know, if they are faithful and obedient. I'll read it for you. First Thessalonians 2.17. First Thessalonians 2.17. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Or not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Amen. Looking around and seeing people that you help come to the church brings you joy. We're talking about uh, living the abundant life, having peace and joy. Some things that you can do will bring you peace and joy. One is to help people come to church. It will cause you to have more joy in your life. Every time you see them, you know, make you, make you uh, feel good inside, have joy. Let's move on to the next scripture. Romans 15:26, telling us how sharing our material things with other people brings us joy. Yeah. Whatever material things could be money, could be food, could be. A coat in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. Could be whatever, material things. Things that are in the world. Sharing that with people that are in need brings you joy. Romans 15, 26. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain to minister them in carnal things, to share physical things. We need physical things in this world to take care of our body. That's right. Right? Yes. And we can share physical things to other people and it brings us joy. Yeah, to know that we were able, uh, that God enabled us to do good for other people mm -hmm. brings us joy. <clears throat> we talked about months ago selfishness. Lose the selfishness. Jesus said, deny self. So, as Christians, we can't be selfish. We have to be willing to help people. Doesn't mean that, you know, we have to be uh, stupid and be used by people. You know, the same person, you know, keeps coming for the same thing. When they come, we want to enable them that if they develop a strong relationship with God, they'll get to the point they don't have to ask from us. God will provide for them. Right. Yeah. But we first get their attention by helping them with their immediate need. That's right. and then we, we give them the fish, and then we teach them how to fish. Yeah. 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 That makes sense? Yes, sir. That makes a lot of sense. I've heard people say that if you, if you, if you help someone, the Lord will bless you. You already blessed if you're able to help. Absolutely. That's right. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's they just saying you'll be blessed more. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Brother Meadows. <clears throat> and we have example there of uh, the first century Christians, how they shared their material things. I'll read it for you. Acts 4:32. I'll read it for you. Acts 4.32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them 
that all of the things which he possessed was his own, mm -hmm. but they had all things in common. Mm -hmm. And with, the great, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. and great grace was upon them all. Mm -hmm. Neither was there any among them that lacked, mm -hmm. for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. As an example, uh, people that receive joy by sharing their material things. There's no joy in being selfish and keeping all your material things to yourself. There's no joy there. It's worry. You know, because you're worried about if you're going to hold on to your money. Let it go, and the Lord will bring you more. Do good. Because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you. Yeah. If you Bible give is out, full of good wisdom. If you right. give out, yeah. another one will come in. Yeah. You made me think about the story. I had it, uh, um, had the uh, chance to travel to Asia a few times because I work on computers. Mm -hmm. And they told me the story about the monkey, how they catch the monkeys. Mm -hmm. uh, they take a coconut and mm -hmm. cut a hole in it and put some rice seeds in it, and the monkey stick his hand in the hole. He like this, he put his hand in the hole. Then he grab the rice like this and make a fist, right. and he can't get his hand out. So then he can't run, right? right? So then he got the big ball, he got the big coconut on his hand, he can't run fast, so then they can catch him. Because right. so, he's holding on. So the example is, people do the same thing. Yes. You know, they hoard, hold on to yeah. that stuff, rather That's than right. share it. That's right. Share it and more, share it and more right. come back. Yes. That was just the example of one of my little stories that I always yeah. remember, how they catch the monkey. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of meaning to it. I know, like, uh, we, uh, it's a little difficult going on between some of the brothers. Uh, see, I put it like this. I remember back in 71, this Italian guy who had his restaurant, I go down, he give me a breakfast on time, I came at the end of the week. And happened one day, uh, I had got forced off the road at that circle that I by the train station and uh, broke my A-frame. So he came by, asked me what happened, you know, so I said, do you need anything? And uh, I think I can get it fixed, but after I got it fixed, I needed a few dollars. So I went to him, I said, yeah, I do need a few dollars. He said, what do you need? I said, well, what is you doing? And he just gave me $40. Mm -hmm. So uh, I paid him back. Then I went on for years going to him, borrowing money mm -hmm. in the back. After about 15 years doing this, he told me, he said, you ain't gonna never be able to help me. What, what he, when he said that to me, I caught myself. Mm -hmm. After all these years, I've been going to him, getting a few dollars, but I was paying back. That's why he kept on loaning it to me, because he knew I was paying back. Right. But he could see that I wouldn't have it myself. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I, when he said that, I caught myself, mm -hmm. and I start valuing my money. Mm -hmm. Now, when I come into the church, it was the brother that was staying with me. Well, to about a few years ago, I've been here, this past New Year, I've been in the church 19 years. Okay. For about the same time, this brother, same thing, always did, but he would pay me back. So I, to, I told him the same thing. Next thing I know, he left the church. Mm -hmm. Now he's coming back, want to come want to bring up some plank of, of thing. Okay. Some of the things he bought up there, mm -hmm. you know, I can see it, you know, it's happened. Mm -hmm. But if when you have your own and don't have to depend no more, little things like that won't bother you. That's right. And it won't hinder you for doing the Lord's will. Absolutely. See, we got to pay our attention to some little things mm -hmm. to help us do the Lord's will. And we have to and recognize. And we to bring it on ourselves. Yes, sir. And we have to recognize that all of us need help. 
Not, not, sure. yeah. not just the one we're looking at, right. you know, the one that we, you know, we, we need help too. Mm -hmm. So we can help other people, we need other people to help us. Mm -hmm. So some people spend all their time looking at everybody else's yeah. fault. Right. They never look at their own fault. Right, so right. You, you can't grow until you recognize your own fault. That's right. Yeah. That's so confused. So. People come and they don't stay long enough to understand that. You know, they come, they're so busy looking at everybody else. You know, never think that they need help too. Well, that's my two sons. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, you said he came back. Hopefully, he'll stay. Hopefully, he'll stay long enough to understand that he need help. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So quit pointing fingers at look at <laughs> That's yourself. right. Yeah, that's right. Spend spend more time pointing at your own self mm -hmm. than you do at other people, mm -hmm. and then we'll all uh, be better off. You know, because we'll have a, uh, a more spiritual person. If everybody spend more time looking at their own self right. than, they, than, than they do with other people, you know, mm. we'll all become more spiritual. Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir, brother. Uh, in that subject, brother, a lot of people, when they're always pointing out other people's problems, they figure if they point out their problems, you won't look at them and see their problems. That's true. So the main thing is abundant life is not in just the material things, mm -hmm. Because you have material things in your life and th something go wrong, and you not, don't have Christ, mm -hmm. then you won't commit suicide, you don't have faith, mm -hmm. you don't have, you're not looking forward to the future. Mm -hmm. Now material things are necessary. Absolutely. But it's not all that. That's right. Peace and, you can't put peace and joy in the bank. Right. right. Yeah, but peace and joy help you sleep at night. Right. That's oh, right. sure, yeah. Peace and joy put a smile on your face. That's right. Yeah, That's peace right. and joy will help you Think about somebody else. Yes. You know, when in their time of need. But Brother James, just yeah. I don't want I don't want to make you lose time. But just the point of what Brother Randolph, Randolph just said back here, we don't want to lose that into all the other stuff. The main point was that <coughs> giving someone money or or stuff all the time. Yeah. Is not helping them to grow. That's what he was trying to and, tell and, them. And what he did, that person did, was he gave Brother Randolph some knowledge, yeah, some understanding, right. and in turn, he right. learned from it. So mm -hmm. now you're trying to pass that back on right. to someone else. Because yeah. even with your children or with anybody, right. you can't always just give them right. Right. money because right. they'll grow up thinking, this you know. This right. is what it's all about. Somebody get no, you gotta give them some understanding too, and that's more powerful than money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. good that he heard. Right. He, he heard. He heard. Well, now he's passing yeah. it all. But the, sure. other, yeah. but the other but the other person didn't hear. Yeah. yeah that's a lot of yeah. Yeah. That's right. like my older sister. That's right. They from, got offended. People get offended. A, right. From a kid up when all the way into it. Yeah. And a few years ago, we were ready to go down to uh Men Local Virginia to this uh well, we have nothing to do, man. The convention we have in down I'm sorry. So she called me and uh, wanted some money. I said, I'm going to go down to Virginia. So her son and I, what you going to do? I said, no, I'm going with the church. And, uh, and I didn't have, you know, she's been mad with me ever since. See, people get offended when you're trying to help them. And for, with knowledge. Oh, what? I'm 67. And she older than me. From a kid up, all the way was happening. And she, and she can't catch on to help herself. It don't matter about it. And when she had it, she had it. But she waves her money foolish. Yeah. All right, brother. Yeah. Back. Which Sorry. Is, we don't want to interrupt the class. Yeah, but no, 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 sometimes go back. Go back. sometimes like it needs to follow some years, you know, yeah. around us, you know. I like interruptions. I like to hear what everybody got to say. So I need help, too. <laughs> so when, when I'm talking, you know, I'm not growing too much when I'm talking. I need you all to talk some. Help me grow. Amen. That's the way I look at it. Okay. So, uh. I'm sorry. Matthew 6. She's telling me where you're at. Oh, okay. It's next. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Next scripture, Matthew 6, 19. Yeah, 21. Yeah. Right. Oh, don't hoard stuff. Matthew 6, 19. Mm. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust don't corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. 
but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm -hmm. So in other words, don't make material things your treasure. Help people in their time of need. Do good. And you will have life more abundantly. You will have more peace and joy in your life. We can read next scripture, 1 Timothy 6, 7. 1 Timothy 6, 7 reminds us, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. He's talking about how many have put uh, money as their God mm -hmm. and suffered uh, because of it and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money brings on many sorrows and we have seen it in the news many times. Okay. Uh, the professional athletes, uh, the actors and musicians uh, that uh, end their life in tragic ways because the love of money brings on sorrow. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that money brings on sorrows. No, it's the love, love of money that oh, brings yeah. on sorrows. You can have money, just don't uh, worship the money. Yeah. Know that you've been given money to do good uh, with the money. I'll read the next one. Galatians 6.10. Galatians 6.10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So if we do these things, we experience peace and joy in our life. Acts 20.35. I'll read it for you. Acts 20.35. I have showed you all things, how that soul laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. <clears throat> so sharing with people that are in need uh, helps us to live the abundant life. Oh, it's good, yeah, that's about it, right? <clears throat> Another proof is in, uh, found in 2 Peter 1.5. I'll read it for you. 2 Peter 1 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, mm -hmm. and to brotherly kindness charity. Mm -hmm. For if these things be in you mm -hmm. and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful mm -hmm. in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's telling you how to be if you want to live the abundant life. Mm -hmm. It's the recipe on how to have the character of Christ. I'm going to read that again. 2 Peter 1.5 mm -hmm. And beside this, giving all diligence, Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, 
they make you that ye shall be shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll move on to the next scripture, Galatians 5:22. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So we would, I think most of us would like an abundance of these things. Mm -hmm. Abundance of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We do what the Lord and his apostles tell us to do. We will have an abundance of this fruit. Let's move on. 2 Peter 1.8. Actually, I read, I read that already. Yeah, Second Peter is one eight. I read two times. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll continue on. Uh, I read eight through eleven. For first, Second Peter one eight through eleven. For if these things be in you and abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We focus on these things, and we shall never fall. Another fruit, Hebrews 13, 14. I'll read it for you. Hebrews 13, 14. Hebrews 13, 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So, you want peace and joy in your life? Then praise God and give thanks to God. Yeah. It will bring peace and joy to your life. Praise God. I remember many classes ago, mm -hmm. I said, praising, God doesn't need our praise. God doesn't need us to praise Him. Uh, we need to praise Him. Because in praising God, it lets Him know that we accept that we are beneath Him. Yes. You understand? Yes. God doesn't have an ego that we need. He need a bunch of people praising Him. Mm -hmm. Praising benefits us. Yes. Praising God benefits us. Yes. It is uh, uh, a way to uh, have an abundant life. It's to praise God. Let God know that you accept that you are beneath Him yes. by praising Him. That's right. By praising His name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't uh, uh, pretend that you are equal with God. Right. Oh, no. Let God know. Above you, like you're yeah. just asking something yeah. from another yeah. normal person. That's right. It'll bring you peace and joy. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Let him know uh, that you accept your position beneath him, mm -hmm. and when you come to him humbly, uh, he'll be more apt to hear what you got to say. Mm -hmm. You coming to him uh, from a position beneath him yes. and not as his equal. Yes. You understand? So praising God benefits us. 
it don't benefit him. The book, the whole book is telling us how to benefit ourselves, how to live, how to treat one another. It's what is in the book. Yeah. So praise God. We benefit when we praise God. He's not an ego, you know. He don't need, he don't need us to build up his ego. Mm -hmm. He needs us to know our place yes. is beneath him. Yes. And that's what praising God does. <clears throat> Let me read Psalms 30, 1 through 12. We're almost out of time. Psalm 30, uh, verse 1 through 12. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Mm. Sing unto the Lord, mm. O ye saints of his, mm. and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Mm -hmm. For his anger endured but a moment, in his favor is life. Yes. Weeping may endure for a night, yes. but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity yes. I said, I shall never be moved. Mm -hmm. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Yes. Thou didst hide my, thy face, mm -hmm. and I was troubled. And I cried to thee, O Lord. Yes. And unto the Lord I made supplication. Mm -hmm. What profit is there in my blood? when I go down to the pit. Mm -hmm. Shall the dust praise thee? Mm -hmm. Shall it declare thy truth? Mm -hmm. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Yeah. Lord, be thou my helper. Mm -hmm. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness yeah. Yeah. to the end mm -hmm. that my glory may sing praise to thee mm -hmm. and not be silent. Yeah. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Yes. Praise wow. God. That's a powerful one. Mm -hmm. Praise God, and the abundant life will be yours. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Let's move on. Yes. Philippians 4 6. Be Philippians 4 6. <coughs> be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So giving thanks and praise to God will help us live the abundant life. Let him know that you accept your position beneath him. Next scripture, John 15. John 15, 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is with it. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. I gotta read that again. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Mm -hmm. Ask for what you need, okay? Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. God wants us to bear fruit, but he lets us choose to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. So choose to bear fruit. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Mm -hmm. The Father is ready to give us whatever we need. Mm -hmm. If we're faithful and obedient and do what he says do. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. I just finished saying that, didn't I? Mm -hmm. But 
he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. We started off by going over all these things that God needs us to do. We do those things, then we shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. of heaven. And Brenda's favorite verse, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. First John three twenty four, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Yes. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Keep the commandments, and I said keep the exhortations too, because both please God. Yes. yes. Luke 6, 30, uh, Luke 6, 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Yes. You want the abundant life? You have to do what Jesus and the apostles say. That's right. We're running out of time, so let's, let's keep on uh, over and close. So I sum this lesson up. I sum this lesson up uh, by showing how to have the abundant life. By reading, we learn to know God. By knowing, we learn to love God. By loving, we learn to obey God. By obeying, we learn to abide in God. Mm -hmm. By abiding, we learn to bear fruit for God. Mm -hmm. By bearing fruit, we experience the abundant life. Mm -hmm. It starts off by reading. By reading, we learn to know God. Mm -hmm. By knowing, we learn to love God. By loving, we learn to obey God. So. By obeying, we learn to abide in God. Yes. By abiding, we learn to bear fruit for God. By bearing fruit, we experience the abundant life. Amen. 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 So we have to be faithful and obedient in everything. You know, uh, I've said before, if we do what God says do, we'll understand it after we start doing it. That first do what he says do, and then the understanding will come. Mm -hmm. He will let us see according to what we do, okay? Not according to what we say, according to what we do. Because doing shows that we believe. Shows that what we believe and what we heard, what we read or what we heard, we start doing, then we can experience the abundant life. Thank you all for your time. Glad you uh, all could make it. Thank you. Let's close with a prayer. Father in heaven, thanks for giving us the strength to come together to study your scriptures and share with each other uh, the truth that you shared with us. We ask that you watch over our brothers and sisters that are on their way to the building and strengthen the sick and shut in that they can join us once again. Yes. Give us all a common mind that we can understand fully the sermon that's being prepared for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.